All right, it's an art form that's been around for centuries, and artist John Akers is creating custom handmade hats using turn-of-the-century techniques, and we've been talking about it, and it is just fascinating and amazing. And before we go too far, uh, take us through kind of the step, walk us through this. Show us what you do. Okay, uh, so a hat starts out like this. It's just a, a collection of fur that they get from an animal. Okay. And then in a felt factory, they, they use steam and moisture and heat, and okay. that... Uh, creates the felting process, and what I end up getting is what's called a hat blank. It looks similar to this. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Then every hat. I'm sorry. What? So no. So you start with that. Start with this. Every hat for me starts with a head measurement. Okay. Once I know the size of your head, I can use what's called a hat block right here. Right. And this will correlate to the size of your head, and cool. I can pull the felt over the hat block, which gives me this general shape right here. Beautiful. I, uh, so you do that when it's wet? Is this wet when you pull that over there like yes, that? Yes, yes. I, I use steam and hot water and really get this okay. moist. It loosens the felt and allows me to form it. Very good. Then I take sandpaper, I sand it down and get a nice silky smooth finish. I use what's called a rounding jack. Look at that. And this tool right here allows me to cut the brim down to the specific size. The next, I would take it over here and I would use, this is called a brim flange. This is a flange stand. This all seems like stuff from a whole different age. It, it really is. Um, this, a lot of these tools that you see up here are at least 70 to 80 years old. My goodness, that's fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's old tools, old tools. And you would... Uh, you so we've got the flange here. Yes, sir. And you take the hat and you would set it inside of the flange like this. Wow. And that allows you to set the curvature of the brim and make it even and equal all the way around. Then... Uh, for me, I, I do everything just like they did, or I try to do like they did at the early turn of the century. Right. So I do it all by hand. So what I would do afterwards is then I would take and I would cut your sweatband to size. Beautiful. I hand sew all of my sweatbands in every single hat. And the, the workmanship inside the hat is unbelievable. Thank you very much. I mean, I mean and that really uh, speaks to your pride in what you do because a lot of people wouldn't see the inside of it anyway, and yet it's beautiful. Well, thank you. That's actually something I, I care very much about. I, I try to make the inside of my hats look just as good as the outside and of my hats. And you kind of got into this because you, you needed a sweatband uh, and a hat of your own, didn't you? Correct. I, I, uh, I, I've always been a hat guy ever since I was a kid, and I had a hat that I needed to get a sweatband in, and nobody in the area does that. <laughs> And so I kind of had to teach myself, and that's where it all started. That's unbelievable. So we get to this point, and then eventually all of that ends up looking like these beautiful examples over Yes, there. yes. All of that, it all comes together. It takes me about two and a half days on average. Right. And, and I, can, I can go ahead and finish a hat to pretty much anything a customer wants. So because a lot of this uh, stuff, like, like the irons and so on, mm -hmm. they do look like they're from another era, do you have trouble keeping your, your stuff going? I mean, how, do you, how are you maintaining your business? Do you have a way, like with this, for example, how, where are you gonna get some more of those? Uh, I, I, sc I scour the internet right. looking for, for old antique blocks that I can use, uh, but there's a, a gentleman out in Colorado that can make uh, replicants of these in different sizes. So right now I actually have a Kickstarter going. I'm, I'm raising funds to purchase about 26 new blocks in different styles and different shapes uh, so that I can make hats for just about anybody. So when you look at somebody, uh, do, you have to, do you have to see the person to fit the hat to them? I mean, hats have personality. Does it have to fit the person? That, that's a great question. Uh, as a hatter, one thing that, that I can do that you, know, you can't necessarily do when you go to a store is I can, I can meet with you or talk with you, and, and right. I can get a sense of, of your personality, your style, and I can actually help guide you into a hat that would maybe uh, you know, express your, your personal style. And we're trying to get the hat to come back. We were talking about this. Historically, yeah. the hat was, everybody had it. You were a fan of Humphrey Bogart and all these great uh, performers. They all had hats. Mm -hmm. Then they kind of disappeared, in part because of John F. Kennedy not wearing a hat in the 60s very much. But we're trying to get this to come back. Y yes, and you know, I, I think it is. They're there's, there's seeing a big resurgence of hats on, on the West Coast and the East Coast. And so I, I think uh, the hat industry is in a good place right now, and it's, it's starting to come back. Well, we're in a good place having you in town. This is beautiful work. Thank you very much. And this is what people here were saying I should try because the, the hat band matches the tie. So we'll see if, does that look like something? Oh, uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on a little backwards, though. It's on backwards. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> How do I know it was on backwards? Maybe my head was on backwards. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. We're going to have a link to the Kansas City Hatters Kickstarter on kclive.tv later today. It is absolutely beautiful. Good luck. Uh, not just the, the hat itself, but the history behind it. It's really fascinating. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. All right.